presentation that the Twitter team made to the Senate Intel staff today was deeply disappointing. Their response was, frankly, inadequate on almost every level. That's one of the topics we're going to get to in this very segment. Mark Warner, the ranking Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, not satisfied, as you heard there, with Twitter's explanation as to how Russia is using its platform to influence American politics or what they are doing to stop it. Company execs met with the Senate and House Intelligence Committees today. Twitter says it shut down some 200 Twitter accounts it traced to Kremlin operatives. Would that that were it. Some were the same agents that bought Facebook ads during the presidential election. Crosstown at FBI headquarters, one impact of the Russia investigation was on display today. You could put it that way. New FBI Director Christopher Wray was formally sworn in. Noticeably absent were his two predecessors, one Robert Mueller, the other James Comey, in addition to the president himself. There is some new information on Mueller's investigation this evening. We're learning that Vice President Mike Pence's attorney spoke with special counsel Mueller over the summer. Politico reporting it this way. The meeting which has not been previously reported, was held at Pence's request to express his willingness to cooperate with Mueller's investigation. Joining us tonight is someone who knows quite a bit about special investigations. Ken Starr is with us, former federal judge, former solicitor general, and independent counsel in the Whitewater and Monica Lewinsky investigations during the Clinton administration. Uh, counselor, I understand you're of the belief that the president should be much more wary and on guard and worried about these congressional investigations than the Mueller investigation. And if we have that correctly, why is that? Well, no, I think he's got to be wary and on guard uh, about uh, both. I think there's a tendency, Brian, to ignore what Congress is doing when famously during the Watergate investigation so many years ago, the explosive fact of the White House tapes came not from Archibald Cox, the special prosecutor, but from congressional investigators during a deposition. So I, I would say it's all hands on deck. Uh, but uh, I, I very much appreciate what was just reported about the vice president saying, we are going to cooperate. The president's lawyers are saying that, and that's exactly what needs to be done. Let's get this over with, and the way to get it over with is through cooperation. Uh, though among reasonable people, shouldn't it be assumed that uh, Mike Pence is going to fully cooperate with the investigation? It should. That should be the uh, that should that should be the operative principle. These are uh, folks that are sworn to uphold the law, and they need need to do their duty. And right now, it is to cooperate with the duly appointed special counsel as well as congressional oversight uh, committees. I'll just say I worked closely with Bob Mueller when we were both serving in the Bush administration, Bush 43, uh, Bush 41, and uh, Bob is a terrific uh, lawyer and extraordinarily able, and he has very good judgment. He's uh, honest, total integrity. So uh, my advice is uh, cooperate fully. Um, uh, based on the, the tea leaves and what we see in public, which of course is a small fraction of what's going on beneath the surface, not unlike an iceberg, do you read anything into where this stands, how far along we are? I think we're not that far along, but it looks as if, especially in light of what we now know, which is the surge of Paul Manafort's uh, condominium uh, early in, in the morning, that's an extraordinary action. Uh, I believe my reading of the regulations uh, under his appointment is that he likely consulted uh, with the deputy attorney general. I don't know that uh, because that was an extraordinary action very high-level person, high-visibility person, uh, and it sends a really powerful message. I mean business. Uh, it's a bit of shock and, and awe. So I, and the report is that there will be an indictment. Uh, I think there will be a number of indictments before this is uh, over. When I arrived in Little Rock in August of uh, a long time ago, 1994, uh, Bob Fisk, my predecessor, said, move your family here. You're going to be here for a long time. And sure enough, there were 14 criminal convictions uh, by the end of our tenure. Um, how will interviewing various White House aides, some very senior, yes. uh, uh, change the tone and tenor of this? They all, after all, have to go back to the West Wing and work with each other, not knowing what was asked, what was said, what was answered. 
It's a terrible situation within the White House. It's demoralizing. It's one of the reasons that you want to get these things over with uh, quickly, uh, as quickly as possible, consistent with a thorough job. Uh, but my advice, again, you've got to be transparent, as we see now with the Jared Kushner, the latest revelations. These facts are going to come out. Truth will come out. So the choice is, do I try to hold on, stonewall, to put it uh, pejoratively, uh, or do I say, you know, the best thing for me to do is just to get it all out there and then face the consequences of that. But you're right. They then have to be very judicious and confidential about what they are doing uh, in the White House. So you have to essentially compartmentalize. Yes or no answer if this is possible. Do you see the president being placed under oath before this is all over? Yes. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.